So today we have a 2017 Ram pickup truck. I don't know what it is. It's not a dually, so 2500, 3500. Obviously we got the 67. Um, this customer's complaint is they are going through a lot of coolants. They said they had to add two gallons of coolants in three or 400 miles. So we obviously have a problem. Um, I pressure tested it. Um, I pressure tested it last week. Today is uh, Monday. I pressure tested it on Friday and I did have a little bit of a pressure loss. Um, nothing externally is leaking. Today I pressure tested it. Um, I did have a little bit of a drop, but it was mostly a pressure increase because the temperature outside increased. Um, and the customer says they see no external leaks. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna go pull this EGR cooler out and take a peek and see what it looks like. I'm gonna try to sneak through the front real quick up here and see if I can see something up here first. So we're gonna pull this cover off. I apologize about the wind noise, but I'm working outside. Truck's a little crusty, so we're gonna give it some assistance today. I don't feel like breaking any of these clamps. There's that one, and then we're gonna go over here. Careful that positive terminal. Scary. Then we have a bolt down here. I think it's an eight. I don't remember if it's an eight or a ten. One right here. And you don't have to pull this to pull the cooler. Um, I'm just trying to see if I can see it real quick. This only takes a few minutes to pull. Because um, if I have coolant here, I know I'm going in the right direction. If I don't, then. Uh, I guess we're still gonna pull the cooler and see. I ain't grabbed my pick. So I'll be right back. Okay, got the old trusty pick. See if I don't break it today. Oops. There's that side. Going over here, doing this side now. Okay. So I got those off. Loosen them up a little bit more, make it easier. It off. It's like it's in there. Okay. Okay. Oh, I don't see anything. There's no real wetness in there. You may not see it back here at the end of it. Yeah, there's nothing in this. So we're gonna continue pulling it and see what we see. As you can see in here, I'm gonna get you in there. It's gonna be a little hard to see, it's kinda of dark. But, you see it's kinda of dry. And then, same thing in the e jar valve. So we're gonna go ahead and continue pulling the, uh, the cooler out, take a peek. It's either a cooler or we got a blunt head gasket. One of the two. And uh, fortunately, these trucks, both of those are common. Or I should actually say a cracked cylinder head. That's actually what we've been seeing lately is a cracked cylinder head on these. Oh, come on, brain. I'm like leaning, hanging over the front of this truck. Okay, we're gonna unplug this. You gotta pop the lock out. So I'll break the lock. Pop this connector off without breaking it. I usually like to push these like this. Just like that. Push the whole thing. 
so you don't usually it doesn't break. These Chrysler connectors. These red lock tabs. Not my favorite. We'll go ahead and get all this wiring out of the way. Next, this camera's just in a really bad spot. Okay, peekaboo. Okay, here's here's where we're at. And like I always say, make sure you keep track of the weather pack um, and the pin lock. You can see it obviously stayed in the exhaust back pressure sensor, but as long as you know. So when you're messing with it, you don't jostle it around and have it fall out. Um, next up, I'm gonna start taking this, this intake pipe out real quick. This camera's gonna be a mess for a minute. I apologize. Um, Dodge, or sorry, Ram. They didn't make any good places to mount it. Even though you know, you've been working on them. And then uh, I have another one too, for tomorrow. Same symptoms. So we'll see how that goes. And I'm not jumping to any conclusions yet. The other one, it might, it might be a bad level sensor. Um, it's not necessarily using coolant, but it doesn't have any coolant in it right now. And we have a NOx sensor code for the front one. So I'm, I'm under the impression that the Knox um, sensor may have been damaged, possibly. It's all just a theory by the, uh, the coolant in the exhaust stream from the EGR cooler. Usually these trucks, then you have like a water pump leak or the heater hose will leak or the radiator. I've seen the radiator leak on these too. Um, or if you have no leaks, uh, like I mean, you're towing and it doesn't spit any coolant out of the reservoir overflow, then it's usually the cooler. Um, if it does spit it out of the overflow, it can be the EGR cooler. I've had a couple trucks with a failed EGR cooler cause, um, what I, I believe to consider head gasket symptoms, um, nowadays, you know, because people like to think if there's no oil in the coolant, the head gasket's fine, but, you know, maybe... 50 years ago that was a thing. Uh, in my time and experience, that's not the, the case anymore, you know? Especially with all these high compression engines. Everything's direct injected, high compression, so they don't really do it. They just put usually combustion pressure in the cooling system. Let's get this clamp so we don't drop it. Be careful with all this stuff. That bolt up there, put it in the nice bolt tray. Uh, Chrysler Ram, or actually, sorry, Fiat. Fiat has allowed us. Okay, let's get this one. What Fiat stands for Fix It Again Tony. My name should have been Tony. All well, these Fiats. But. And this truck does have 150 something thousand miles on it, somewhere around there. Don't quote me on it. Break the crankcase filter. Might have to grab a swivel. I really don't want to break that. It's inevitable I was going to forget some tools. I went back three times for tools before I started filming. And the other thing I noticed too is um, on these trucks, it seems like, it's like, I don't know if, you, if you're familiar with the six liter. The six liter they had kind of a cascading failure in a sense where um, there's a couple different ways that things would fail. So generally the consensus was that the, e the, sorry, the six liter power stroke, the oil cooler would plug up, which it did because of the casting and the, the sand and the casting when the engines were manufactured, plug the cooler up, 
which, you know, I, I kind of, uh, I think that's, that's the most likely culprit. And what that does is it actually starves the EGR cooler of coolant. And then um, with the lack of flow, it, it actually ruptures the cooler, the EGR cooler. And then you start consuming coolant and you don't know and you blow the head gaskets. Um, and that's what I kind of believe on these trucks happens as well. I believe they have a leak. Um, let's say radiator leaks or water pump leaks and nobody really pays attention to it. They really don't care about it. They continue to drive it. And uh, of course, this with this EGR cooler being at the height of the cooling system, it's generally the first one to get starved. I mean, obviously we have the heater core too that's about level with it, but those are two of the first things to get starved and the EGR cooler will not put up with that, with that hot exhaust gas going through it. You know, we could, we'd be talking 300 to 1400 degree air temp, exhaust gas temps going through that thing. You know, with coolant splashing inside of it, it's just going to rupture. There's no, there's no if, ands, or buts about it, you know. But, you know, and, and what I mean by saying that is this truck, I noticed that it was in a collision in the front end and the radiator's been replaced. Because I tried to drain the coolant, it has an aftermarket radiator, and the plug is so tight I can't loosen it. So, um, that's what makes me kind of think of that, you know. That's kind of why I believe this EGR core is probably ruptured. Is because the cus someone whoever got in the collision may have continued to drive it low with low coolant and actually caused the cooler to rupture. Um, oh, that sounded beautiful, but you know that's just how you have to think of things. You know, I always try to find the the root cause of the problem instead of just kind of fixing the problem and then guessing. You know, and then I had another truck here recently that had. I mean, this truck had leaks upon leaks. Uh, same thing, another Dodge Ram. Um, the truck came in lack of power um, and uh, same 6.7 the problem with that truck is it had um, I'm trying to remember um, it had some turbocharger codes I believe um, had obviously low coolant um, overheating um, and what I noticed with that truck is the water pump was leaking and the, the exhaust gasket on the EGR cooler was blown out it was blown out so bad that it was actually spitting coolant on the firewall because the EGR cooler ruptured. Um, and again, from what I believe is the the main failure was the actual water pump causing the EGR cooler to rupture because the customer didn't care about the coolant level, you know? Even though these trucks are equipped with a coolant level sensor, you know, they just kind of, people continue to drive. And you can always add water. If you're in a pinch, absolutely add water. It's you know, it is what it is. It's just, if you're close and you can tow it, I would tow it just in case you don't damage anything. But if you're stuck somewhere and you got to get out of there, put water in it. As long as you're not free, as long as it's not freezing outside and you don't shut it off and let it sit and freeze, you'll be fine. Just make sure you drain it out and fill it to whatever you do. You know, um, I think the general rule of thumb is, you know, like 50 50. That's what I aim for here. Um, you know, because we really don't get crazy freezing temperatures here in Southern California. Uh, I keep changing my sockets. So we need to <laughs> fill in. So next up, I'm going to take this little shield off right here so I can get to the clamp on the cooler. So it's just two little eights right here. The shield's not going to come all the way off. I just need to move it. I'm going to bend it out of the way. So we can get everything going. Uh, there should be two. Yeah, there's one right here. And there's that. I'm gonna bend it gently out of the way. We're not trying to break it. Just if you take this nut off, sometimes I've had them rip the shield and tear the shield up. So I try not to touch the shield. And then we're gonna go in through the bottom right here. Uh, I would like to show you this. This is kind of interesting. So you can see right there. Hopefully, I can't see camera it's being like me see how the clamp right here see the, the clamp and you don't have to take these all the way loose like you saw me do on those I like to get them really loose though it just makes it easier so you're not fighting it you guys are gonna be hooked to the positive battery terminal now so enjoy So, just like the other one, you just push down on the bolt, pop the bolt down. Okay, there you go, just like that. Oh, man, it's crazy today. 
Okay, I need a 10. Okay, now I have my swivel, so we're gonna get this 10 out right here. Try not to touch that nipple. I wanna break that. Um, now usually, to make it a little bit easier, I like to loosen this bracket up. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen these 10s, this bracket. This makes it a little easier. There's one over here. I believe, yeah, this one. Oh, I dropped that down, deep down below the pits of Fiat. So far, I only dropped one. It's not too bad. The truck's almost like it sat near an ocean for a little bit. Kind of a lot of rust. Here's that. So that's all loose. You don't have to take this all the way out. I just leave it in here. I just like it loose so I can move it around. Um, now this. Now I didn't drain the coolant out of here because of the drain plug on the radiator. I couldn't get it to move. And I don't feel like breaking this radiator. So I have a bucket. I'm just gonna pop this out and let it drain into the bucket like a caveman. And It's got the wrong cool in it too. That's always nice. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and uh, start getting these bolts out. I'm trying to get this pipe out. Just don't want it to break the crankcase filter. I might as well take this crankcase filter off. Yeah, I might as well pull this crankcase filter off. It'll make it a lot easier because I'm kind of fighting around it, you know. Go ahead and get all these little eights off around. There's two bolts in so far. Harness lift it off. It'll make it easier with this crankcase filter out um, to get the uh, bolts on the back of the cooler out. Okay. Yeah, you gotta take the oil cap off, pull this cover, pull the whole shebang out. Um, I think I'm just gonna leave the filter in there so we don't get any debris in the engine. There's no reason to. Take it out right now anyways. I'm gonna set this rag over there. Okay, now let's pull this tube. Put the harness over there, get that out of my way. Pull this tube out. Okay. What's that? My bad, Andy. It's all good. And then, you can see back here, it's gonna be really hard to see. I'm gonna leave you right there. Get a little extension. Wind is getting crazy. I almost have this out. Once I get this out, we gotta move those. <laughs> Getting all beat up down there. I'm in a little bit of a hurry. Okay, and there's one on this side. These bolts are actually string. Okay. And they should be extremely tight too. 
getting that one. And, then, and these are uh, non-magnetic, so try not to drop them. That's my, my warning to you. Okay, let me move the camera right here. I got that nut out. I'm gonna try to pull it out now. Attempt to. Okay, I gotta lift the back. Try to get this clamp loose. Usually what I do is I lift them, lift the back and then slide it, slide it backwards. Gotta slide over the studs. And then, gotta get this clamp. Yeah, it's all the way off. Some dodge magic. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta play musical cars. I'll go find out. Okay, thank you. Just this O ring. These O rings are really. Yeah, they're really hard. They're all like that. It's gonna go pop. Up goes the weasel. There we go. Sitting like that. I don't know, might have to pull this exhaust back pressure sensor out. I'm gonna have to pull that out real quick. Okay, now I tried skipping a step, but it's okay. Get a little lube on that. Got some assortment of wrenches here. I don't remember what size this stuff is. Because this is a newer one with the sensor, usually the older ones. Just wanna be careful not to strip this or break this. Collar. Now, I probably can't even see what I'm doing. So I'm getting this nut on this exhaust back pressure sensor. Just rocking it. I really don't want it to uh, strip that housing. Just gonna take it all the way out, hopefully. Okay, there it is. Put the sensor in. I set the sensor up here. Because I need that in my way. It is like in my way. Oh, cool, I didn't drop those. So now, there we go. I want to see. It's cool, it looks weird. And survey says, what do you guys think? Yay or nay? I say yay. I was correct. For once. Okay, I'll show you inside. Show you inside my crib. I still want to get any coolant in the exhaust or in the turbo. Dokey. Come on, baby. I know. I just have a little bit of a rush, son. Getting just a little kind of hurry, a little too fast. Which is okay. It happens. I'm gonna pull this. I think I'm stuck on a stud. That's what's I'm hitting. Okay, perfect. Okay, now I'm hitting this. Okay. Oh, it's a baby boy. It's a baby boy, Dave. Yeah, you Paula, locker? Uh, yeah, that's fine. I think, as he is, are they picking it up today? Uh, okay. 
It's a baby boy. Can you help? Got it? No, I got it. No, it's okay. If you look in there, you can see, it's gonna be hard to see how clean it is. Let me take the light. You see, see the moisture down there? See the clean spot? I know it's really hard to see. Um, but it shouldn't be that clean inside there. Let's see if I can roll it over so you get a better look. See, uh, see right up there where it's kind of wet? It's ruptured. Even in the back. The back looks good, but you can see that buildup. It's generally coolant. You can see right there on the bottom fin. See how it's wet? So it's cool as ruptured. 